What's up guys, in this video we're going to be going over animating Roblox Studio, everything you need to know about it. Let's get started, make sure you subscribe. So for the first thing in Roblox Studio animation, you need to know that in case you're an old developer in Roblox Studio, Roblox actually moved the animation stuff over to the Avatar tab. It used to be in the Plugins tab where you would find your animation editor, your avatar, rig builder, all that stuff. Now it's in the avatar tab right here. As you can see, they've got the rig builder and the animation editor. So keep in mind, it is the avatar tab now, not the plugins tab. So now that we know that we need to go to the avatar tab, let's go ahead and check out the rig builder. The rig builder is incredibly useful for animating as it makes an already rigged dummy for us to use in our animations. And we can transfer those animations over to our players and cutscenes, whatever we'd like to do. Now the rig builder is not only used for animating, it can be also used for building, modeling, and sometimes even scripting I believe. So the rig builder is definitely something that you're going to want to know and use. Anyways, in order to use the rig builder, it's kind of simple. All you do is click on the rig builder button right here and a little window will pop up. Now in the rig builder, there are two different types of rigs you can make. There's the R15 rig, which has 15 body parts and makes good for fluid animations. Now the R6, this is a rig with only six body parts. So it is a little limited in the things you can do with it, such on the animating side of things, but it is still useful in some cases, such as it is very simple and a lot easier than R15 animations, but I personally prefer R15 just because there's a lot more you can do with it. Once again, you can have fun with all of these different types of rigs, the block rig, mesh rig, man rig, woman rig, etc. All these different things that each have a different look and style, but they all do the exact same thing in the animation editor. As for me, I'm just going to add in a block rig right here. So now I've got Mr. Dummy here in the workspace, all I'm going to do is click on this animation editor up here. Now the animation editor is the tool Roblox uses for us to animate rigs inside of Roblox Studio. And now a rig is basically a rigged character or model that you can animate with. In order to make sure that your model or whatever you're animating is properly rigged, you should be able to hover over your rig and a blue outline will appear over it when you're in the animation editor. Now when you click on this rig that you have, as you can see Roblox will prompt you to name your animation. I'm personally going to name mine to R15 Animation Tutorial, just because this is what I'm doing. And then you can click on Create. Now two things are going to happen when you click on Create. The first one, as you can see this timeline will appear. This is where all your keyframes will go and the scrubber will appear. This is called a scrubber by the way. It's basically the thing that you use to go across all your animations. This thing actually has many different names, but in Roblox Studio it's called a scrubber. So let's talk about keyframes here for a second. A keyframe is basically a little marker in your animation that tells you when a thing needs to move or wants to move in that matter. A keyframe in Roblox Studio, they're incredibly simple to add. And if you wanted to add a passive keyframe just normally by right clicking and adding a keyframe, you can do that, but first you need to click on this little plus right here and then add the entire body of the dummy right here. As you can see when we do this, all of the dummy's body parts will show up in the bottom left here. And now we can right click and press add keyframe here. So as you can see what that did was that just added a ton of keyframes for every single part of our body here. And that is going to be our starting keyframe. So this is our start keyframe, which will basically tell the game that we want our character to start in this standard position. Next, let's add some movement to this. So I'm going to go to about here on the animation timeline. And this is where you get to actually go ahead and animate your dummy. Animating can be very simple depending on your animation. There are sorts of tools you can use to animate in Roblox Studio. Anyways, to actually animate your dummy, you can see that you can click on each individual body part right here. When I click on his right shoulder, you can see this little rotate wheel will pop up. Inside of the avatar tab, you can always change or move up these rotate increments right here. And this will change the increments that you use inside of your animation editor. For me, I have the rotate and move tool at zero degrees and zero studs, but I can turn these up or down, such as going by 10 degrees and maybe 10 studs, which is an awful lot. But as you can see, when I did that, I've now got a much different rotation increment selected. So there are all sorts of things you can mess with in here. 
I personally enjoy 5 on the rotate and about a 0.1 on the move increment. I think these are perfect for animating, otherwise you can go lower than that. So now there are two things you can do in the animation editor. You cannot scale the dummy in different parts like you can in a rigged blender model, but you can rotate it. We have three different axes that you can uh, that you can rotate your character's arm or leg on. There's the green one, which I believe is the Y axis, the X one, uh, the red one I mean, which I believe is the X axis, and then the blue one, which I believe is the Z axis, if I'm correct. So there are these axes that you can use to animate in Roblox Studio, but say you didn't want to just rotate him, you wanted to move him as well. Well, if you press R on the keyboard, you can see it will switch over to our move tool. This you can actually tell will move our arm. You can move it away, you can move it closer, you can do all this stuff. Now. If you were to move the lower torso down here, you can see it'll drag the entire body because everything's linked up to that lower torso right there. It's the same thing with animating. If you press R to go back, you can see this will rotate everything in a circle because it's the lower torso and it basically controls everything. And you can move the scrubber around in between your keyframes to see what happens in between them. And Roblox Studio will automatically add a keyframe whenever you move a body part. So you don't need to keep track of any of that. Anyways, have fun with this animation editor. Let's move on to the next few things. So now we're gonna go over this top bar right here, what each of these buttons do. Starting over here at the timeline, this is where you get to manage your timeline, I should say. As you can see, I have my timeline at one second exactly right here. But in case I wanted to make an animation such as something like five seconds long or maybe even longer, I can change this little animation increment right here, the timeline increment I should say, to something like 5 colon 0 0. This will make our timeline extend to 5 seconds long, and as you can see I can add a lot more keyframes to my animation here. Anyways, I'm going to keep this at 1 second long for now for the sake of the tutorial, otherwise feel free to mess around with that. Now we get over to the looping button. This is especially useful for certain animations, including idle animations, jumping, an not jumping animations, but running animations. So now when you loop your animation, as you can see when you play it, sometimes it will not always be so fluid and precise. But if I were to grab these first keyframe right here, right click, copy selected keyframes, and then go over to the end of my animation, right click once again and then paste keyframes you can see that my animation will be much much smoother now with looping turned on because it'll go back to our starting keyframe once it loops and that'll make it perfect and seamless now these buttons are quite obvious or self-explanatory i should say this one will move to the very last keyframe that you have this one will move to the next keyframe that you have but i'm already at the last one this button will play the animation this button will play the animation in reverse. This button will go to your leftmost keyframe right here. And this button will go to your leftmost keyframe on the very left side. So now that we get over to this mysterious and ominous three dots button right here in the left. This button will lead to everything that you really use in exporting your animation or even importing your animation. When you click on this, you should see a little more windows and buttons pop up. This first one, save. It will save your animation in case you're making several animations with the exact same rig. It's very important as you can swap between these animations anytime without losing any progress or data save. Click on save. You can see it'll save my, it'll save my animation right here. When I click on the three dots again, I now have the load button. This will load my animation that I just saved. Now if I were to click save as, you can see I can either overwrite my saved one right here by clicking this button, or I can click create new. So I'm going to save this as R15 animation tutorial one. Save that, you can see it does save that. And now when you go over to the three dots on the left here, can see I can now load my first one or my second one I made. Anyways, let's get into the import button right here. When you hover over this, three more buttons will appear on the right. From Roblox means this will open up all of your previous animations on Roblox that you've made or created over the years or maybe seconds that you've been animating. 
from FBX Animation. This will basically go over any Blender files that you have, or maybe even Maya, depending on what software you use for animating and even modeling. As you know, you can animate in Blender, but you can import those Blender animations into Roblox Studio, and this will allow you to do that. Now you've got the live animation creator. This is still a beta feature. I've got a tutorial on how to use this. It basically imports your animations from videos on your computer that you can use, and Roblox Studio will automatically animate it for you. It is important, but it's kind of goofy at the moment. You can test it and feel free to use it at your own risk, I should say. Now we have published to Roblox. This one is quite self-explanatory. This will save it. This will allow you to use it in scripting. This will allow you to publish your animation. Now we can go to create new. Create new, self-explanatory once again. It will create a brand new animation for you and make sure that you save the one you're currently working with unless you just want to rage quit on this one which i don't recommend doing anyways now we have the animation priority these are incredibly important the core animation priority it's kind of like your basic animation priority it's useful for any animation that you're making the idle animation priority this animation priority is basically used for idle animations for your character pet whatever you're animating the movement animation priority is basically the same but for running and walking animations and the action animation priorities are basically for tools such as swords axes whatever you're making those are for those types of tools and now the optimized keyframes button as you can see I've got all these keyframes down here but they don't really apply to any of these actual pieces because in this starting keyframe, my guy is just standing still. Nothing has moved. So we don't need a keyframe at every single body part telling it to be here. So what Roblox can do by clicking this optimize keyframes button is it'll get rid of all the keyframes that you don't need and it's just cluttering up your space or maybe even lagging your animation. So now you can click on OK and you can see that all those animation keyframes that are underneath here are now gone. It's been cluttered up but your animation will stay the exact same. Now let's get over to the big button. Publish to Roblox. When you click this button and your animation is ready, Roblox will prompt you to title your animation, write a description for your animation, and you can even change the creator. So you can change the title, otherwise it will remain the same name that you named it when you first created it. For the description, I'd recommend something simple like subscribe to Rusty Silly Band. And for the creator, it's important to note that if you're making a game in a group or for a group, you need to change the creator of the animation to the actual group Otherwise, the animations won't play when you're actually in the game. This is something important to note as it can very most definitely screw games over inside of Roblox Studio. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Now you can click on submit if everything you have is ready. Once this loads, there are a few things you can do here. The first one is copy this animation ID by pressing this button to the right of the animation ID. And you can also find your animation on the website right here by clicking this link. Now when you click on close, this window will disappear and you can X out the animation editor as we are now done with it. So now that we've successfully created and exported an animation and published it to Roblox, we can get into scripting that animation. If we want it to actually play inside of a game, let's get to scripting that. For dummies, this is incredibly simple. All that you're gonna wanna do is click on your dummy in the workspace, go ahead and click on the plus icon to the right of that, and then add in a script. In the script, you can go ahead and add in an animation. This animation, basically has a property that, has, that will take your animation ID and we can easily access this animation and get your animation ID that way. Now when you go to the view tab right up here, you, we need to make sure that you have the property button and the explorer button enabled. Now inside of the animation ID inside of properties, it should be under the data section right here. You can control V your data, your animation ID I should say from earlier. Now let's say that you forgot to copy your animation ID and you clicked on close. Don't worry, you can easily find your animation once again. All you need to do is go to home, open up the toolbox, and when you open up the toolbox, you should see something like this. It's got all the free models right here and the categories. But if you click on the four dots right here, this will open up your inventory of all your models and all your animations. All you need to do is go over to where this drop down menu will appear, click on it and go over to my animations. 
When you open up this, a whole list of animations will appear, and it should be the most recent one that will appear here, which is the one you're just working on. You can access your animation ID by right-clicking the animation and clicking on Copy Asset ID. So that's a very simple fix to animating, well, to gathering your animation ID in Roblox Studio. Now I've zoomed in a little bit, let's get to scripting this. Now, of course, you will have to get your own animation ID, otherwise this will not work for you. So make sure you're making your own animations. Now let's get into scripting. So first off, we need to get our animation. So we'll say local animation will be equal to script dot animation. Our script is the script we are scripting in at the moment, and our animation is the animation that we put inside of our script. Pretty self-explanatory, and this is just a variable getting our animation name. This is just a name. You can change it to whatever you want to. Now let's go ahead and get our humanoid. This is the thing that every player and character and dummy has. It's what allows it to be animatable. What allows it to be alive, basically. As you can see, when I click on the humanoid and then go down to properties, you can see the humanoid controls the health of the player, the hip height, the jump power, walk speed, basically every important thing about the player, the humanoid does. So we need to get that humanoid inside of our script. So let's say local humanoid will be equal to script dot parent dot humanoid. Now let's actually get our animation track, which would be playing for our dummy. So uh, I'm going to say animation track. And this will be equal to humanoid colon load animation. And then we can put our animation variable inside of here, just like this. So now we've got our animation variable inside of our load animation function, I should say here, that is running off of our humanoid we can actually tell that animation track to play. So if I go ahead and click on animation track colon and then play with a capital P and parentheses, this will play our animation track, which is our animation being loaded from the humanoid. Now, there are several things we can do with this further than just playing it. In case you wanted to make it so that we can stop our animation, something like waiting five seconds and then telling our animation track to stop. That will stop our animation after five seconds. Something simple like this that is important to know in scripting, just in case you wanted to stop your animation. This is mainly used when you have looping animations you want to stop after some time, otherwise it will just go on infinitely. And with our animation track being told to play, we can also adjust the speed of our animation track in case you want it to go slower or maybe even faster. As you saw in the intro of this video, I was moving slower than the dummy was. This is how I did that. You can go to animation track colon adjust speed. And now this is where we put our float integer inside of this parameters of this little function here. A float integer is basically a number with a decimal point, something like 1.0, maybe 0 0.5 or 5.0, something like this. It can be even 4.5. Any, in, uh, any number followed by a decimal point is basically a float integer. I believe the max of this is 10.0 and the lowest you can do is zero or 0 0.1. Otherwise, this is your base script for running an animation off of a dummy in Roblox Studio. You can test this by exiting out of the script and clicking on play. So this was the basic animation that I created. Something just wiggling his arms about. I did put it on looping so you can see it will go on forever and our dummy is playing the animation here. So this is something cool you can try, but in case you wanted to learn how to script animations on the player side of things, I can show you how to do that as well. So now in order to script our animations for our player, we can go into the starter player folder right here open that up and then inside of starter character scripts we can go ahead and add in a local script by clicking the plus icon to the right side of that add in a local script and make sure to put your animation inside of that by clicking the plus icon and finding your animation inside of the animation go ahead and paste your same animation id unless you want to use a different one otherwise you can use a different one now inside of our local script we're basically going to be using the same code so local animation but there is one slight change we're going to make to it. Instead of script dot animation, we're going to do script wait for child animation. Since our local script is inside of starter character scripts, whenever the player joins the game, this script will automatically be moved into the player's character. And since it's moving, we need to wait for the animation because that will also be moving with it. 
Otherwise, we'll get an error saying that our animation is not a valid member of our local script right here because that animation hasn't loaded into our local script just yet. So it's important to know that you need to use a wait for child right here. Now let's go ahead and say local humanoid. We're getting our player's humanoid this time. will be equal to script.parent. Once again, wait for child humanoid. It's important to note that you do need to use a capital H right here. Anyways, inside of our local animation track, this will be the exact same code as before, the humanoid, load animation, parentheses, and then our animation. Just like this, and we can do the same animation track, colon, play with a capital P and parentheses, just like that, to play our animation. Now we can click on play to test this out. As you can see, when I stand still, I'm doing the exact same animation that our dummy here is. This is how you can script animations for the player in Roblox Studio. You can feel free to mess around with this, and feel free to use the adjust speed and stop parameters of this code as well. If you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did and learned from it, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.